Today we're going to be talking about our must-start running backs for week eight. We've had a lot of injuries last week, so we're going to have a lot of things to discuss this week. Let's ride. Welcome back in. Welcome back in. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Our top 12 running backs for this week are Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Kenneth Walker, Christian McCaffrey, Nick Chubb, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Jonathan Taylor, Ramondre Stevenson, Leonard Fournette, and Alvin Kamara. So let's go ahead and talk some of my favorite RB1s this week. Let's start things off with Kenneth Walker versus the New York Giants this week. They have a 24 implied point total this week, and they're two and a half point favorites. Giants have allowed the third most rushing yards to running backs, the 11th fewest rushing touchdowns. But the Giants also rank 30th in rush DVOA and 26th in pass DVOA. Over Kenneth Walker's last three games since he became the starter, Walker leads the league in rushing with 353 uh, rushing yards and is tied with Josh Jacobs with four rushing touchdowns. He also ranks sixth in yards after contact per attempt and second in avoided tackles as well uh, over that same span. The only really concerning thing with Kenneth Walker really has been his pass catching usage. He's only seen three targets uh, over that span, he ran, which ranks 41st among all running backs. So, But we ha really haven't seen them in a negative game script yet to really see them uh, really uh, how things will play out for Kenneth Walker. Would they use him a little bit more in the passing game? Because uh, right now that just really hasn't been the case for Kenneth Walker. But regardless, I, it's not something I'm really all that concerned this week against the Giants. Uh, so I think this is another great matchup for Kenneth Walker. You can absolutely start him with confidence. Uh, next up, we have Ramondre Stevens going up against the New York Jets. They have a 21 implied point total this week, and they are two and a half point favorites. The Jets rank 14th in rush DVOA, but 10th in pass DVOA. They've also allowed the ninth most rushing touchdowns and the 18th most rushing yards. Over the last four weeks, Ramondre Stevens is the RB3 overall. Uh, he's also seen the sixth most targets as well. So he's really become like a true workhorse running back. Uh, over that same span, he's seen the sixth most rushing yards with uh, three touchdowns. He also ranks 10th in yards after uh, contact per attempt, 21st in avoided tackles per attempt. He also ranks uh, top five in carries inside the five over that span. So even with Damian Harris coming back last week, Roger Stevenson dominated that backfield. He's a pass catching running back. He sees a lot of early down work as well. So, Ramondre Stevens is looking like a locked in top 12 running back rest of season, even with the healthy Damian Harris. So really, really like Ramondre Stevens this week against the Jets. Next up, we have Jonathan Taylor. Uh, they, they are playing the Washington Commanders this week. They have a 21 and a half uh, implied point total this week, but they opened up at a five point favorite. It's already dropped to three. It's probably going to continue to drop with Sam Ellinger at quarterback now that Matt Ryan is out. Uh, Washington, this is not a very good matchup either for uh, the Colts this week at least in terms of on the ground. Washington ranks fourth in rush DVA, but they're 29th in passing DVA, so you really beat them through the air. But they have allowed the 16th most rushing yards, but they've allowed the eighth fewest rushing touchdowns, uh, but they've allowed, but they've also allowed the ninth most fantasy points to running backs. But that is largely due because allowed the, the most uh, receiving touchdowns to running backs, whereas a lot of those numbers have come in at. So uh, they, have, they have been very stingy on the ground. And so Jonathan Taylor has been okay this year. Uh, he averages 13.1 fantasy points per game. He's seeing 18.2 carries per game and 4.8 targets per game. With that kind of opportunity share, that kind of usage, you would think that he would be doing so much better, but he just really hasn't been. You would think with averaging almost all over 20 touches per game that he would be putting up more than just 13.1 fantasy points per game. But really the biggest problem has been touchdowns because uh, he's averaged 77 rushing yards per game and 14 receiving yards per game, but he only has one touchdown on the season. He also hasn't been efficient, 42nd in yards created per touch and 36 in yards per out run. You know, until this offense turns around or gets better, and maybe Sam Ellinger can light some spark, this just is not a great matchup for Jonathan Taylor this week. I have him ranked as RB12 this week. I'm just not nearly as sold on him, and I'm done with ranking him inside the top five. He's done nothing to uh, deserve that kind of ranking, and this is just not a very good matchup. So let's go ahead and jump over to the RB2s this week. We have uh, Damian Pierce, DeAndre Swift, Travis Etienne, Aaron Jones, Raheem Mostert, Miles Sanders, Ezekiel Elliott, James Conner, Devin Singletary, Tony Pollard, Najee Harris. Though I will say I have Najee Harris at RB26. Cody has him at RB21. That's why he comes in at RB23. I am lower on him than consensus. Then you have David Montgomery at RB24. So let's talk about a few uh, a few of these RB2s. First off, let's talk about Travis Etienne. We can all, all everybody that owns Travis Etienne, everybody that's, that's held on this season and really ridden this wave with him. Finally, James Robinson is gone. James, you know, love James Robinson. I've loved him since he's coming to the league. You know, awesome story for what he did as an undrafted free agent, but he has been traded to the New York Jets. And so now this is absolutely Travis Etienne's backfield. This week they get the Denver Broncos, who are just an absolute mess. This is a London game. 
Uh, right now, the Jaguars are 21 and a half point point total. Uh, Denver allows the 15th most rushing yards, the 13th most rushing touchdowns, the seventh most receptions, and the ninth most receiving yards. Uh, right now to running backs they are uh, really susceptible on the ground 18th uh, in rush dvoa fourth in pass dvoa last week we saw travis Etienne with james robinson play 81 percent of the snaps he carried the ball 14 times saw five targets this is the third week in a row he's now eclipsed 100 total yards and has found the end zone for the first time this season last week but um you know now now with james robinson gone there's really nobody else there michael hasey this is travis Etienne's backfield and moving forward he should really should be viewed as a very borderline RB1, especially in matchups right now. So there's just a lot of running backs here. You know, you have in the top, you know, top 12. I really wanted to get him in my top 12. I just couldn't quite get him there. I have an RB14 overall this week. This is a really good matchup for Travis Etienne. He's also been incredibly efficient. Eighth in yards created per touch, fourth in breakaway run rate, ninth in two yards per carry, and 12th in yards per out run. So Travis Etienne, we can lock him in this week and just continue moving forward. Uh, next up, we have Raheem Mostert. Love Raheem Mostert this week. Just an absolutely terrific matchup against Detroit. Uh, Miami also has the second highest applied point total this week. And they also have the highest. This is also the highest game total on the slate as well for this week. Detroit is 29th in rush DVOA. So they've been really bad against the run. But they've also been just as bad against the pass. 31st in pass DVOA as well. But they allow the second most fantasy points to running backs. The seventh most rushing yards. And they're tied for the most rushing touchdowns with 10 on the season. You look over the last four games for Raheem Mostert since he's kind of taken over this backfield. He's averaged roughly 14 fantasy points per game, and he's RB 15th overall. He also has the ninth most rushing yards with only one rushing touchdown, but he's also 13th in yards after contact per attempt. And since week four, he's averaging almost 16 carries per game, a 70% snap share in this offense, and about three and a half targets per game. So there's a lot to like for Raheem Mostert. Great matchup for him this week against the Lions. You're absolutely starting with confidence. Next up, let's talk about Devin Singletary this week going against Green Bay. 29 flight point total, highest on the slate, 31st in rush DVOA, 11th in pass DVOA, uh, seventh most fantasy points to running backs, second most rushing yards, and the 14th most rushing touchdowns on the season for Devin Singletary. Like I said, he's going to be a guy that's probably going to get you on most weeks, probably 12 to 14 touches, uh, depending on game script and how things go. Obviously, Josh Allen's going to take things away on the ground as well. He's going to steal touches on the goal line. But Devin Singletary has still been an, uh, a pretty decent fantasy option this year. He's just outside. He's right at uh, 24th in uh, fantasy points per game with 11.4. He's averaging right around 62% of the opportunity share, 10 carries per game, 4.8 targets per game. He's 25th in route, uh, yards per route run, 31st in yards created per touch. Um, and he's also fifth in routes run and it's with a 12% target share in this offense. So I think Devin Singletary is a pretty decent low end RB2 this week, mainly because he's just not going to get that type of you know big time usage unless they just get up big. But this is a really good matchup against a, a Green Bay defense that's just not very good on the ground. So Devin Singletary is another option you can look for. And then James Conner should be back this week. Cliff Kingsbury came out today and said that he expects them to return this week. Minnesota ranks 21st in rush DVOA. They've had the 14th most rushing yards, 10th most rushing touchdowns, and the 16th most fantasy points to running backs. They've been very mid uh, to opposing running backs. But prior to James Conner going out with injury, he was seeing 11 carries per game, four targets per game. He has missed the last couple of weeks. But he was also 28th in yards per route run and 30 third in yards created per touch and he was 24th in yards per route run 24th in routes run as well i think james connor returns i think he's a pretty decent low-end rb2 option this uh, against a minnesota defense that can definitely be had on the ground so i think james connor is a decent option this week uh i think Edel benjamin's still going to be utilized in the passing game third down option i think he reverts back to that but james connor right now you know if he if he plays this week I think he's somebody, again, you could fire up as a low-end RB2. Let's jump over to the RB3s really quickly before we wrap this thing up. Uh, you, right now, you have Najee Harris. Listen, I'm done with Najee Harris. I'm no longer ranking him inside my top 24. He just hasn't been that this year. I think he has one RB1 week and one RB2 week. Other than that, he's been, he's been outside of that. He hasn't been useful. He's only averaging 10.8 fantasy points per game. He's very much just a flex option to me at this point, depending on matchup. And this is not a very good matchup against Philadelphia coming off the bye. They have the absolute lowest implied point total this week, lowest on the slate, 22nd in rush DVOA on the year for, for Philadelphia. They've allowed the eighth fewest rushing yards, but they have allowed the sixth most rushing touchdowns. But this is an offense that I think is going to be finding the goal line very often this week. Uh, Najee Harris is still seeing an incredible workload, though. 78% opportunity share in this backfield. Um, but he's 34th in yards per route run, 44th in yards created per touch, even despite the fact that he's 10th in routes run. So Pittsburgh's offensive line has also been dreadful, 25th in adjusted line yards. It's just not good. This offense hasn't been very good. Team hasn't been very great. Najee Harris just hasn't been worth it. Again, 
If there's some better matchups, yeah, you can play him as a flex play, but he's no longer a locked in RB1 or an RB2 at this point. So, unless things turn around. So, anyways, let's keep it moving here so we can get this thing wrapped up. Deonta Foreman versus Atlanta. I think uh, if Chuba Hubbard were to happen to miss this week, I think Deonta Foreman looks like a pretty good option. Played 54% of the snaps last week, 15 carries, two targets, 145 total yards. For 16.5 fantasy points per game. They rank 26th in rush DVOA, but they have allowed the fifth fewest rushing yards on the season. But Deonta Foreman, I think, is in a decent matchup against Atlanta. We're not really worried about them going to be game scripted out. We'll see if he's going to be utilized more in the passing game. Two targets isn't terrible. We want to see a little bit more than that. But Deonta Foreman, I think, is a decent flex option this week against Atlanta. Next up, you have Brian Robinson. I don't know what to do with him. He's seeing a lot of carries. 20 carries this past week, 17 the week before that. He had he did score a touchdown, and he's only averaging 8.3 fantasy points per game. Indy has actually been decent against the run this year uh they are eighth in rush DVOA on the year which is very good but they have allowed the 13 most fantasy points per game but i just brian robinson just hasn't been good at all and i know he's coming off you know obviously being shot so we have to take that into consideration here but he's been 50th in yards created per touch and 63rd in two yards per carry they need to use antonio gibson antonio gibson looks far more explosive he looks like the better running back right now we'll see if things change a little bit but i'm not trusting brian robinson unless i absolutely have to against Indy. And then we have this uh, Michael Carter situation. Brees Hall, poor one out for the homie, you know, out for the year with a uh, torn ACL. Uh, but Michael Carter, they did acquire James Robinson that we talked about earlier. But New England allows the eighth fewest fantasy points to running backs, the fewest rushing touchdowns of the year. But they have allowed the eighth most rushing uh, eighth most rushing yards for 133.6. Last week, once Brees Hall went out, he played 75% of the snaps, 13 carries, two targets, 75 total yards. Uh, on the season, he's 24th in yards created per touch, 22nd in breakaway run rate, 20th in evaded tackles. So I, I don't think James Robinson is going to see like a, a huge volume this week. I, I think it's very much like a Christian McCaffrey situation. He works in for certain packages, maybe on the goal line, short yardage work. Michael Carter probably still sees a lot of the opportunities. So I do think he's kind of a borderline RB2, high-end RB3 this week as a flex option. So if you need to play Michael Carter, I think you could do that as well. And then Melvin Gordon, lastly, 56% of the snaps last week, 11 carries, four targets. Jacksonville has not been very good against the run, 18th in rush DVOA, but they've allowed the eighth most fantasy points to running backs. Mike Boone is now on. On IR. Broncos signed Marlon Mack to off the 49ers practice squad. Tavius Murray played 37% of the snaps last week. Eight carries, three targets, 23 yards and a score. I don't love playing a Melvin Gordon unless you absolutely have to, but if desperate times calls for desperate measures, it's not a bad matchup against Jacksonville, but this, this team is just in such disarray. So that's kind of where I come in on that. So Anyways, I appreciate everybody checking out the video. Let us know in the comment section below any questions you have, start sick questions, what, what have you. We will answer them. If Or you can jump into our live stream we have every Wednesday and Sunday mornings to get you ready for week eight. Uh, we're, we're here to try to win you a championship. We're getting closer and closer to fantasy playoffs. So keep it locked in here for more great content. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.